Hello everyone, hope you're having a glorious day. Did Jesus affirm or transform? Let's take a look at this. There's this crippled man by the pool of Bethesda that Jesus heals, and then he turns around and says, you are now well, but don't sin anymore. Something worse might happen to you. Did he affirm him or did he speak to him in truth to transform him? What about the woman taken in the act of adultery? Did Jesus affirm or speak to her in truth to transform her ways of adultery? So he says, I'm not going to accuse you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm, but don't sin anymore. You may go now. Don't sin anymore. See, he's, he's not affirming. He's speaking to her in truth to transform her behaviors. Not even God will deny your free will to choose. You can choose to reject or deny him or trust and receive him. What do I mean by this? Well, in his hometown, Jesus wasn't able to do a miracle there. He was amazed because of these people's unbelief, their lack of trust, their lack of, of faith in him and who he was. So Jesus didn't overrule their choice to reject and deny him. How about this one? Uh, Matthew records people wondering where Jesus' wisdom and miraculous powers came from. They, they took offense at him, and he, he didn't do any miracles there because of their lack of trust, their unbelief. So he didn't overcome their free will choice to reject and deny him. See, our culture has this tolerance above all else, above even truth, which pressures us to affirm everything. Now, affirmation can be a good thing. When someone scores a winning goal, that's great. You can affirm that and, and celebrate in that victory. But in a situation where truth is compromised, should we affirm anyway? Should we take a left turn to affirmation land where the motto is, you are perfect the way you are, never change? Or should we follow the good news of the kingdom? Take a right turn to you know, the idea God loves you and me even in our rebellion. Let's transform together. Let's try to figure out where we miss the mark, where we miss our intention or design, the purpose that has been set out by God for our lives, and correct our course back on the road to the target. So should we affirm at the expense of truth? Well, I'm a psychiatrist, and I get people come in and tell me all kinds of crazy behaviors. One uh, recently told me, yeah, I'm having sex with a married woman. Well, that's not good for anyone. So uh, I, I wouldn't affirm this. I have to speak in love and truth. How about kids uh, that wanted to play in traffic? Should we affirm their curiosity for the street? The goal is conviction. Some people call it conscience or the voice of God. Now, when someone you warn in love and truth about uh, God's purpose and design for their life, and they don't heed this warning, they don't follow your advice, do you condemn them? Do you judge them? Do you tell them they're going to hell? Or do you allow and respect for their own free will? Jesus talks about the prodigal son, and he wanted to go chase prostitutes and party. And the father, who owned all the, the mansion and the resources, said, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll give you these. These are yours. These resources, the time, energy, money, resources, those are yours to spend how you want. But you can't do it here. You have to go away from here. So we're called to say, you know, I've warned you, but you're free to choose. God gives us this freedom of choice to freely respond to him and his truths or reject them. And we have to respect others' free choice to do the same. The Bible's full of God's wisdom 
But when we don't heed the pragmatism and value it holds, life and reality are incredible teachers for learning the futility of the world. It's much easier if we learn it from reading God's wisdom and obey. We get to experience a relationship with Him. And if and when they want to take responsibility and admit they're wrong, turn around and go the opposite direction, well, this is time to celebrate. This is mercy. The father of the prodigal son runs to meet his son and shows him mercy, shows him forgiveness. I get pushback uh, a lot from people and they say something similar to this. Well, I can't believe in a God who will not affirm homosexual behavior. In other words, I could teach God a thing or two about being God. I could teach him about tolerance. Our sophisticated, enlightened culture has moved past this old concept of God. Well, any cursory read of the Bible, anyone would know God loves all people. John 3.16. We, as the church, should love all people. God hates all sex outside of marriage of a man and woman and considers it sin. Why? Because he's holy. He can't live uh, uh, near sin. And Christ's followers should hate all sex outside of marriage and consider it sin. So I find there's two hermeneutics, two ways that people approach the Bible. Do we read the Bible to know God better or do we read the Bible to know better than God? Lee Strobel set out to know better than God and came to the conclusion that this was an inspired book of God and he came to know God better. But if we don't know what's in the Bible, the world would try to trip us up. So what is the standard? What is the, the way to be affirmed by God? Well, if we just look at one of these standards, the standard that Jesus said, he said, whoever looks at a woman to desire her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is an incredibly high standard for our sexual behavior. Pornography, that's clearly a sin in relating to what he said about looking on another woman. Who can uphold this kind of a standard? Well, now you're starting to understand why we need someone to rescue us, why we need a savior. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a wonderful day.